Hey guys, if you like my videos and you aren't subscribed to me, you can also follow me on Twitter at Dorian.slash where I post links to everything that I record and uh, put up as well as a bunch of random buffoonery. Uh, today I'm going to do a how to install video. Uh, I already did the Ubuntu one, but this time I'm going to do Manjaro and I'm going to go a little more into uh, setting up the partitions at the beginning. Um, so basically what I've done is I've, I'm doing it in a virtual machine so I can record it here. Um, but basically what I've done is simulated putting an ISO onto a USB stick and, uh, you know, plugging it in and installing it on a, on a real machine. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, check out my other how to install Linux, the Ubuntu version. I show you a few ways on how to get that ISO onto your USB stick. So I'm going to fire this up now. And I'm again using a live ISO. This is the Manjaro GNOME edition or GNOME edition. And I highly suggest with most distributions, if you have the ability to try it, try it first before you install because you never know you might have some hardware issues. Another thing is for Manjaro, as you can see here, you have the option for driver. If you pick that, it's got the free and the non-free. This is for your graphics. So if you have an NVIDIA or an AMD card, you could pick the non-free proprietary graphics and booting off the USB stick is a, a good opportunity to know if it's even gonna work because it doesn't always work, especially with hybrid graphics cards. So here you could try the non-free. If it doesn't work out, install the free. I'm just gonna go with the free for now. Another advantage to using these um, live sticks where you can try it first is uh, any other hardware uh, say you have a special gaming mouse or uh, who knows you just want to log in uh, you could check to make sure your Wi-Fi card works if it's a 5G card you can make sure that it still connects to the 5G so um, if some things aren't working as they should at least you know and you can have a look at it see if it's a quick fix or maybe try a different distribution altogether it's just uh, something good to do for me this is a, a virtual machine so of course everything's gonna work and uh, so GNOME it'd be the same thing with um, if you're using Ubuntu with the old Unity or XFCE or um, Budgie desktop whatever you want to use and then up here I don't this is a virtual machine so I don't have a Wi-Fi but you'd be able to see Wi-Fi connect to your network make sure it works open up Firefox or whichever browser comes with the distribution you're using go to a page and make sure that your internet is working and I would actually even go one step further if I were you just a suggestion go to YouTube and just play a random video, um, preferably something with, let me just turn the sound down here, preferably something with, you know, a lot of motion and you can, okay, well, maybe this isn't a good one, but you know, you can go full screen and you can make sure that it's gonna look nice on your system and it also shows you that your, your graphics are going to be nice when you install it. So anyways, uh, Manjaro. So here for me, I've installed in this virtual machine two uh, virtual disks just to show you, which you can access by going to disks like I just did. Um, so I have a 500 gig drive and a 250 gig drive. The numbers, forget about them. Anyways and just ignore the rest. Don't unmount these. This is for the installation. So what I've done is I put a NTFS partition on the 500 gig just to simulate a, a Windows installation that you already have. And I'll, I'll show you to, uh, if you throw in a second hard drive that's blank, what else you could do with that. So you could check that out. Um, one thing I'll say, if you already have Windows installed, clean up the drive as much as you can. Um, if you can defrag it, do that as well. It helps to move files away from the end of the partition that Linux is going to use. Uh, if you accidentally close the window like I did, 
you can just go in and just search for hello. It's the Manjaro hello window that pops up and it has the launch installer button down here. So when you click on that, it's going to go through the usual installation stuff, your language, your location, your keyboard, and then you're going to get to the partitioning. So like I said, here I have two drives which are selectable up here. So you can say replace and it'll just replace it completely. Uh, erase and you can see here it'll install your root drive and then a swap partition. And you can go manual partitioning as well. So first I'm going to go, let's say you have Windows on it, you have a, this is a 500 gig drive and let's just say you have uh, 300 gigs free and you just want to you know try this out or whatever so click on manual partitioning go next and then select the partition here which is SDA you can see here it's the NTFS and you're gonna click edit so here you can go like this and you can trick it down let's just say you put it like right down the middle that's approximately you could type it in if you want and then on the content it says keep or format if you format it's going to wipe everything that's on your Windows partition or whatever you have maybe it's another Linux partition um, if you keep it what it's going to do is any files that are in this part of the hard drive on the right are going to get moved over to the new smaller size and then you can hit OK and now you can see you have your free space and your NTFS partition now it's not doing anything yet once you get to a point where you've told it where the root partition is going to be and everything it'll let you click next so you could do anything that you want here you can change your mind and say okay well I don't want it that big it's not actually changing anything yet now you can click on your free space and say create again whatever size that you want and I'll just say this for the swap partition if you have a huge amount of RAM um, I'd say 8 gigs or more, preferably 16 gigs of RAM or more, you don't really need a swap partition. I have 16 gigs of RAM and I never put a, a swap partition, but let's just say, just so I can show you, you, you do need it. So I'm going to make an 8 gig swap partition, and swap partition is basically if your memory is getting full, it's going to take stuff out of RAM that you're not using right now and put it on in the swap partition. Then when it needs it again, it's going to take it away. So 196 megabytes or gigabytes is for the new partition. This is our free space. So I'm going to take 8 out of here and make it 188. That will leave 8 gigs left over. And you want it to be the ext4 file system for Linux. The mount point is going to be just slash your root and all the rest of this just leave it alone you don't have to check off boot because grub doesn't care about that grub is the bootloader so now you can see we have windows we have the Linux partition at the root and a bit of free space now we're going to click on the free space and create a file system type of Linux swap once you click that you don't have to do anything else uh, Linux will know this is a Linux partition and it, it'll use it automatically. So now you're done that. Um, let me just switch drives now. Let's say you left this alone and you want to install it on a second drive. You're going to go into your second drive and or let's just say it's a blank drive. If you can't create a partition it's because there's no partition table. You have to create the table first and then you can put partitions into it. So when you click new partition table you have the two options of master boot record or a GUID partition table. Master boot record is older, it's what DOS and early Windows used and it's actually still used. Um, the downside with a MBR partition is you're limited to four um, logical partitions. If you want more, then you have to create an extended partition and then put more logical partitions inside that 
extended partition. Another downside with MBR is all the file system information is stored in one location, all the partition information is stored in one location. Now with GPT partition or partition tables, uh, you can have unlimited amount of partitions and you don't have to mess around with extended partitions or anything and all the partition information is stored in multiple spots on the on the disk so if one gets lost or is corrupt it can still recover itself the MBR if that gets corrupt it's gone so unless you're running on very old hardware and I mean older than I don't know eight ten years old um, go with GPT. Um, actually, you know what, it, it's more operating system wise. So if you're using anything older than Windows XP, use the MBR. But that's only if you're dual booting. If this is just a Linux machine, just do GPT. And you know what, if your system is being wiped completely and you're just trying it out, you could pick whatever. If it doesn't work out for you, just reinstall. It doesn't take long. So then now with your free space, you're going to do the same thing here. You're going to take 8 gigabytes away from this, or whatever you want. You can take 10 gigabytes, it doesn't matter. And make it your root partition. And then you're going to take the rest of the free space, and you're going to make it your Linux swap. All right, but I already have this set up on the other drive, so I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to take these out for now just because. Delete, delete. Alright, now another thing if you have more than one hard drive it's going to ask you at the bottom here where to install the bootloader. Which disk do you want to install the bootloader on? So this is important because it's usually SDA. Um, so by default pick SDA. If you have an M2 SATA drive uh, it'll be, it'll start with an N N M V E, really long thing. That will be your first boot device. But that you can change in your BIOS. Um, if you have no idea, pick SDA. If you have one drive, pick the only drive. It's, it's all right. All right. So now we're gonna go next, and you're gonna put in your name. You're going to put in your password, and it might complain that your password's too short or something. It's totally up to you. You can tell it to log in automatically without the password and use the same password for the admin account. If you have kids or someone else in the house who you don't trust um, possibly installing something or messing with something they don't, they're not supposed to make the password different. If it's just for you or you and your wife or whatever make it the same password it's really it just makes things a lot easier so now it's all set and now it's ready to install and it's going to show you what it's what the partitions look like now so this is the one drive and then this purple one is the other hard drive and then it's going to show you the after for both so the after i left it alone i just wanted to show you guys how to uh make a new partition table. That's the only reason why I did this dual thing. Um, and then if you, the, the other option, if you don't want to touch your Windows partition at all, you could have just left that alone, installed Linux on your second drive, and then choose, again, whatever your, your boot drive is. Make sure you put the bootloader on that one. If you mess up and the bootloader didn't work and it just goes straight into Windows, uh, check out my other video. It's dual booting and repairing Grub after installing Windows and I show you how to fix that. So no worries there, I got you covered. So then continue, yes, install now and then it's gonna go in and it failed but it's fine. I was messing around with these partitions a lot so ignore this video altogether. I wasn't even gonna go through with the install this is just one of my test virtual machines that I've been torturing with all these videos and I should really just <laughs> I should really just make a new one instead of continuing to add drives to it and formatting them and whatnot. But anyways, 
That's the gist of it. Once it's done installing, it's going to reboot and bring you to the login screen and you're going to install or you're going to log in with your username and password and uh, that's it. You'll be done. You'll be up and running with Manjaro. Um, I have a few things with Manjaro. I have my two reviews up so far. Uh, the first initial review and then a week after and I'm now two weeks in and uh, or not quite but uh, I'm still liking it although I did have some major graphic drivers issues and I had to reinstall from scratch but that's why you have to back everything up um, there's even some nice backup utilities that come with uh, Linux they're not always installed so you can always just go in and install it um, Deja Dupe is a good one and you can set it up you can tell it where you want to back up your home folder and how often it can do it automatically every day for you it's a really awesome tool to use and uh, yeah I would recommend Deja Dupe and that's it for now if you uh, like my videos please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and you can also check me out at dorian.slash on twitter and i promise to post as many interesting things as i can and that's it for now till next time